Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, death spirals and virtuous circles, which are two uh, flavors of a reinforcing uh, feedback loop. Um, so starting with death, uh, death spirals, a quick definition uh, here. We see these all the time actually. I'm not sure I need to define it uh, too much. But it's a, a set of events that reinforces itself toward greater kind of negative or undesirable uh, outcomes. Um, you know, one trouble leads to another, which exacerbates the first problem, which causes the second problem to be worse, and you know, things kind of spinning out of control and reinforcing, uh, and reinforcing each other. So let me give you a couple examples to solidify the concept in your mind. Um, the first is the team example. You see this with teams where poor morale um, causes people to quit, uh, and then um, that becomes more work for the people that are left, which causes the morale to be even lower, and then to have more people quit and have more work for the people left. And, you know, I'm sure you've seen this. Teams get into a funk. They get into a negative uh, cycle. Morale gets down. People are quitting. You know, and it becomes a very undesirable uh, situation. And eventually the team can disintegrate if, uh, if nothing's done to stop it. So that's a popular, uh, not popular, but a uh, sort of well-known uh, death spiral. Second is stock price. So for some reason, there's some reduction in the confidence in the company uh, from investors' point of view, which causes the stock price to drop. That stock price causes even less confidence in the company, uh, which causes the stock price to drop even more. And companies can get onto a negative side of, uh, of uh, Wall Street, which is this cycle of the price dropping and reduced confidence and the price dropping more, and you know it can get, get down pretty low unless there's some event uh, to get in there and... And, uh, and stop that. Uh, another example is um, one of uh, one of my concerns um, in the, with regulations and the FDA. Um, we had a situation where we could not fix anything but just safety bugs, and so other bugs. There was this great pressure to get them fixed because customers were wanting them to be fixed, but we couldn't fix them. So there was an incentive on behalf of the field to classify things that were safety issues because we were allowed to fix safety issues that weren't necessarily safety issues. So more things were categorized as safety issues. That caused us more regulatory challenges because the team had to sort through these non-safety issues and explain why they weren't safety issues. And that could have caused us more problems with our regulators, which could have extended our period of, um, of being in this situation where we would have even more pressure to fix bugs and even more incentive to over-classify safety issues and even more regulatory problems sorting through through these. So this was a kind of death spiral that I was a little bit concerned about, which the uh, good news is we didn't, didn't get into, which, which was good. And the last one, uh, this is sort of prose, um, but uh, customers fear, I read this in the newspaper last year, and the story has uh, you know, deepened since then, but customers' fears over a potential bankruptcy at General Motors caused basically customers to stay away from GM, which pushed the automaker into more of a risk of bankruptcy, which caused more consumers to stay away. And so eventually GM did go into, into bankruptcy. But this was a customer confidence, you know, negative loop that really, you know, didn't, didn't hurt GM. It's similar to this one where, uh, or didn't help GM. It's similar to this one where it's an investor confidence problem. This was a customer confidence issue that caused the situation to spin very, very negative. A couple examples of virtuous uh, uh, virtuous circles. Um, the economy of scale is a very popular one. So you increase your product sales, you increase your volume, which allows you to have better economies of scale, um, which allows you to have lower production costs, allows you to lower your prices, have more competitive price, which allows your, you to sell even more units and your revenue to go up, which allows you to have more economy of scale. So when you see a company release a product, um, get that early wave of customers, lower their price in six months, get that next wave of customers, lower the price again, get that next wave of customers. They're riding up this economy of scale uh, curve, which is very positive and really allows, uh, allows the product to take off in the market. And another example is the employee, investing in employees, um, having them be more competent and more motivated and higher skilled and stick around helps you deliver better products and services to customers. Um, and that will in turn help your revenue and your profits. They'll be buying things from you, which allows you to invest more in employees and offer more growth opportunities, which allows you to serve customers better, helps your financials. And so this is another very positive loop between employees and customers and your financials. 
um, that's uh, good to get get uh, get into. So, uh, and the last one is this kind of a sports analogy, but many games have this um, uh, have this uh, rule of thumb, and the one I have here is baseball is a game of momentum. So you get some hits, you get some runs, you're feeling confident, you're alert, your head is in the game, you're supporting the team well, uh, which allows you to get more hits and more outs on the other uh, team and you know work together better as a team which allows you to even get more runs and so once you get a positive momentum in uh, in baseball it, it can carry the team through the whole uh, the whole game so that's why people say that I saw that in some some article uh, article somewhere okay so um, the lesson the lesson is uh, a couple things. One, starting with death spirals, is obviously you need to watch out for them and stop them if they happen. And the two ones that I'm always on the lookout for are the team death spiral that I uh, talked about earlier. When a team gets into a funk or starts a downward spiral, you've got to intervene and, and make sure that, that that doesn't happen. And the second is a customer death spiral where a set of customers leave you and then there's this negative perception in the marketplace that you're the vendor that they should leave. And other customers sort of get this feeling that you're not the vendor to sort of ride, ride with and causes more customers to leave, causes more of a negative brand perception, and even more customers leave. And so you get into this, you know, very hard to get out of downward, uh, downward spiral that's very important to stop very soon. Because these things can be very powerful and very hard to recover uh, from if you let them go too far. And then from a virtuous cycle point of view, you know, the main lesson is to watch out for these and encourage them and support them. So the two that um, uh, I see the most are really the product or uh, company sort of on a roll sort of uh, spiral. So a company growing by positive word of mouth, it, the product's good, it's satisfying customers. Those customers are telling other people through white papers or articles or speaking at conferences or being a reference site or those sorts of things which causes even more people to adopt your product, which causes even more positive stories in the market and word of mouth. And so, you know, this is a very positive upward curve of word of mouth that, um, you know, for products or movies or companies or, you know, the, 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 you know it's a very, very good reinforcing cycle to be in. And the other is just uh, team confidence or individual confidence. So, a team is winning, let's say a sales zone is, is wins a lot of deals and is ahead of their plan and that increases the confidence of the, the team and that allows them to perform better which increases their confidence even more and you've got this very positive positive reinforcing cycle there. You know an analogy you all know as leaders to drive change or when you take a new job or those sorts of things you're always looking for those early wins. Uh, well why is that? Because an early win that you publicize and get people behind increases the confidence that we can do this. And that confidence increases performance. People's head is in the game, they're positive, they're putting everything into it, and that allows you to perform and get that second win, which can increase your confidence. So this confidence performance loop can be a very positive loop on an individual that's on a roll or a team that's on a roll or a product that's on a roll. And this is something that you want to encourage. You want to really build that confidence performance loop in, um, in a positive way. So those are the two that, uh, that I'm always, um, those are the two for virtuous that I'm always looking for and the two that death spiral that I'm always looking for in the business, business setting. Of course, there's plenty of other examples outside of the work, uh, work setting, but uh, we're at work here, so I'll focus, uh, focus on those. And then this is a lesson which I'll have to cover in a subsequent video. Um, but what drives a positive loop is the same things that drive a negative uh, loop. So with teams, they can get into a negative funk or a positive reinforcing cycle. With customers or products, you can get into this positive word of mouth cycle or a very negative word of mouth uh, cycle, which I uh, described of having a bad brand perception and customers leaving you. And so the word of mouth can drive you one way or another. Sort of the positive morale can positive or negative morale can drive you one way or the other. And so the types of things that drive a reinforcing loop will drive it either in the good direction, it'll spin positive, or drive it in the bad direction, it'll spin negative. So 